Justin, some neuroscientists would say, and some who study neuroaesthetics uh, in particular, that although we are far from understanding how the brain generates and appreciates art, that when we do, whether that's 10 years or 10,000 years, that there will be no residual, that we will have described in full detail the totality of what art is and why it's appreciated. From your work in cognitive science, uh, do you buy into that reductionist argument? Oh, I don't. I don't. Uh, no ambiguity on that. No, not at all. <laughs> Just because we're finding what the uh, neural correlates are of a certain kind of reaction to a work of art, that doesn't say anything about the value of that art or the truth that it's conveying. Uh, it's social utility, any of those types of things. It's just saying, well, this is how the brain processes that kind of stuff we call art. The claim is that when we know how the brain really understands uh, and, and appreciates that art, that, that, that accounts for my, my deep emotional feeling, whether that's in 10 years or 10,000 years, that at that point there'll be no residual because we'll have understood the essence of, of that, what, what is it? If it's, if it's oral, if it's uh, electromagnetic, if it's uh, sound waves coming into my ears or electromagnetic radiation coming to my eyes, it's translated through various parts of the brain and then it gets synthesized and then it's in the, in the enjoyment center or the beauty <laughs> center or whatever it is. Uh, I, I mean, you're, you're claiming that there's something more in that object, but where is it? Uh, well, what I'm suggesting is that that level of description doesn't exhaust our understanding of that phenomena. Um, we could play the same game. Well then, let's look downstairs on the sort of brain structures at the, at the biochemistry of it. Well now we've, we've described the biochemistry, we don't need that brain explanation. Mm -hmm. Oh well, we, let's look downstairs from that biochemistry down to just pure chemistry and then down to physics. Well we have a physical description of this. Okay. Well that's not going to map remotely onto what we mean when I'm experiencing something that's beautiful. Um, as a complete organism, not as uh, a collection of uh, atoms zapping each other. Well, but what else is there if, if, you're, if you believe just in the material world? Uh, uh, because it's, it's just different, the properties at different levels kind of all yield up together. Sure, they have a different expression and different laws at that level, but there's no, nothing magical in each level that, that causes a, a difference between the others. Even if one accepts that all there is is the, what we might think of as the material, physical world, which is uh, far from an uncontested claim. Sure. But even if we think that's all there is, whatever that is, um, it doesn't mean that at each level of description we're capturing exactly the same things and the same causal dynamics. There seem to be emergent properties, even, even from a purely physicalist kind of view, that more complex systems have just different features. Correct. They have now, different qualities right. about them than looking downstairs. And if we're saying that the beauty of an art is an emergent phenomenon, then there are two kinds of em emergence, to be simple. I'm sure philosophers have a lot more than two. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But this, this weak and strong. Weak basically says that it looks emergent. I don't know how it happens like uh, two atoms of hydrogen, one and oxygen, they're both gases, and have, you put them together and it's wet. Right, you get <laughs> wetness. How does that happen? <laughs> that's emergent. But you can actually go to the quantum mechanics, the bonding, the angles, and figure it out. It took, took a long time, but you can do that. Other things, uh, called so-called strong emergence, some people don't think there is such a thing, but if there is such a thing, in principle, you could never see that emergence. Yeah. You could never explain that emergence. So if, if, is that the claim, that something in art that creates the beauty of it is of the strong emergent claim to where, in principle, it will be impossible to discern that in terms of physical terms? Yeah, I'm, I'm plenty happy to not be optimistic <laughs> of, about this. Uh, I think because it seems to me the, uh, the function of good science is to move our understanding forward. And once we get to a certain level of decomposing phenomena, like experiential phenomena, the experience of beauty, down to neural activation patterns, and in this case, they surely be incredibly complex, we wouldn't even understand it at that point. We might be able to scientifically describe what's going on but it wouldn't give us any meaning or understanding. So what's the value of uh, the neuroscience of art? It seems to me that uh, neuroscientific approaches could really help us discriminate on a more fine-grained basis. Well, what really are the, the cognitive mechanisms going on in thinking about art? M 
my understanding of uh, the neurosciences in relation to the cognitive sciences is they often help us decide between competing visions. For instance, we might out of just regular lab cognitive psychology types of studies have reason to think that this kind of artwork produces these kinds of behaviors. Okay, behaviors could be eye gaze. Mm -hmm. They could be um, they, they could be physiological measures. They could be uh, feelings that are reported. They could be uh, utterances. Whatever they are, behaviors. And because of or through this sort of careful experimental study that the cognitive psychologists are doing, we might be able to propose some kind of mechanism. Ah, well, this art is activating our sense of agency in the following ways, which then produces this kind of an emotional experience, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And someone else, a cognitive psych psychologist, might say, no, -uh, uh uh it goes this way, and propose a, a different kind of causal structure. The neuroscientists often are very good at helping us discriminate between those mm -hmm. two, by comparing with known sorts of uh, physiological systems, patterns in the brain.